In this exercise, we'll complete the next item in our programming to-do list, reading the value of the slider after the user taps the Hit Me button. Along the way, I'll teach you about two concepts that you use all the time while developing iOS apps, strings and variables. Let's dive in. Okay, open up ViewController.Swift and add a new line of code right here before show alert. Start with the keyword IB action. This is a keyword so the storyboard editor can detect your method. Then type in func, again, that's short for function, and we're gonna call this slider moved. Then open a parentheses, and we're going to put the parameters for this method. This parameter takes a single parameter called the slider. So start with underscore, and then type in slider UI slider. And then you have two curly braces for the body of the method. Now, what does this mean? Slider is the name of the parameter, and it's a type of UI slider. This underscore right here specifies when you call this method, you don't have to say slider moved slider and then pass the name of the slider. Instead, you can just pass in slider moved slider. Okay, now we want to print out the slider's value for now, so we'll just use call the print method and we'll say the value of the slider is now. And now here we want to print out the value of the slider. So how do we do that? Well, there's a shortcut you can use on Swift. If you use the slash and two parentheses, any code you put inside here, the value of that code will be printed out. So we can type in slider.value and the slider.value will be inserted into the string. Okay, so now we need to connect this method we just wrote to when the slider is moved. So how do we do that? Well, we open up main.storyboard, and what you do is you select the slider here, and then hold down control, and drag up to the view controller here, and release. Now this shows you where you can connect it to, and there's our slider moved method that we wrote. It shows up here because we put that IB action keyword on it. So I can just select that, and now it's connected. Now just to verify that it works, I'll select the slider, and open up the utilities panel, and open the last tab here, which remember is the connections inspector. And I see here all of the sent events from the slider, and one is called value changed, which we just connected to the view controller slider moved method. This is similar to, remember if I click the button here, how the touch up inside action on the button is connected to the show alert method. That's it, now we can build and run. And go back to my app, and I see is that I've moved the slider it prints out the value. So far so good, but I would like that slider to be printed out inside show alert. But unfortunately, I can't just access it here. I can't say let current value equals slider dot value. So if I try to build this, watch what happens. I get an error. It says use of unresolved identifier slider. The reason is, is because at the end of this slider move method, in other words, when this curly brace closes, the slider variable is no longer accessible, it goes away. So what I need to do is store the slider's current value somewhere that I can access later. Fortunately, Swift has a building block for this purpose, the variable. Let me show you how to do this. I'm gonna delete this here. And at the top of the class, right before any of these methods, I'm going to add a variable. The way I do this is I type in var for variable, and I'm gonna set current value as the name of the variable, and I'm gonna put a colon, and then the type of the variable, which is an int, it stores integers, and then I put equal to give it an initial value of zero. Remember how when I said a view controller or any object really can have both data and functionality? Well, the slider moved and show alert methods are examples of functionality, while this current value variable is part of the view controller's data. Let's take a quick break and review how variables work. A variable allows an app to remember things. Think of a variable as a temporary storage container that can contain a single type of data such as this hat, that can store cute creatures. You don't just put values in a variable and forget about it. You'll often replace the value of a variable with something new. For example, you might want to put a rabbit into the hat instead. In fact, that's the whole point behind variables. They can vary. For example, you'll be updating a variable called current value with the value of the slider each time it changes. You can configure each variable to store only a certain type of data such as this hat, which just stores cute objects. You can think of variables like children's toy blocks. The idea is you put the right shape and the right container. The container is the variable and its type determines what shape fits. The shapes are the potential values that could be put into the variable. In the code we just wrote, we set current value to an int. That means we can store whole numbers in there, like one, two, three. We could not store decimal values like 3.14 into that variable. 
There's one last thing I want to mention. Remember how I said a variable is a temporary storage container, but how long is that temporary? How long will it keep its contents? Each variable has a certain lifetime. It depends where in the app you defined that variable. In this case, current value will stick along for as long as the view controller that's containing it does. You can think of them as their fates being intertwined. So in this case, the view controller and its current value variable will be around for as long as the app is around. Later in this section, you'll see some variables that are short-lived, known as local variables. Enough about theory, let's get back to code. Okay, so now that I have this variable, the first thing I want to do is set this current value to whatever the slider is whenever the user moves the slider around. So right in here, I want to say current value equals, and basically I want to put in slider.value. But if I try this, watch, I get an error. It says cannot assign value of type float int. This is like the example earlier of putting the wrong shaped children's toy into the wrong container. We have a float here, which is a decimal point value like 3.14, and we're trying to store it in a container that can only contain whole integers like one, two, and three. So for this to work, we need to be able to convert the floating point decimal value into a whole integer. Luckily, Swift has a function built right in to do that, and it's called L round F. And we put the slider dot value inside parentheses. And what that does is it rounds the value to the nearest integer. And now if I compile again, it works. At this point, I've stored the value inside current value, so I just need to display it and show alert. What I'm going to do is make a new string called message equals the value of the slider is, and here I want to put the current value. Do you remember how to get the current value inside this string? Remember our friend the placeholder, backslash and two parentheses, and whatever we put in here will be displayed inside the string. So we're going to put current value inside there. Now that we have our message, we'll change the message from what we wrote, wrote earlier. This is my first app. Delete that and just type in message instead. That's it. Now I'll build and run. I'll move the slider around and tap the button. And it shows the value of my slider in the pop-up. Awesome. 